You know, we always believe that with these vaccines, we have to lead with science. We have to build confidence in the safety and efficacy of the vaccines. As studied, the vaccines were, were definitely given as two-dose regimens, all except for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And so we, at some point, are going to need to address the question, does spacing vaccine doses out, does using half doses formally uh, give you the kind of safety and efficacy that we want to see? The WHO has gone ahead and endorsed a, a regimen that is not you know, one dose followed strictly a month later by another dose. Um, mm -hmm. But again, you know, what does the science show? We are going to need to convince people of the safety and efficacy of these vaccines. 15 million people in the UK have received at least one shot. We're going to have to make sure that they get their second shots and that the remainder of the people in the United Kingdom are vaccinated as well. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. that's the part to observe very closely. How enthused are you by J&J's one-dose vaccine where the efficacy rate is you know, around 65 66%? So I think Johnson & Johnson is looking at other um, uh, dosing schedules. That, that's an important consideration. Um, it's definitely important to see efficacy, to see prevention of severe uh, disease, which is, is also something that Johnson & Johnson vaccine was able to show, to see efficacy against the South African variant, which again, is a very critical proof of concept. You know, we have some laboratory tests that might suggest that the Moderna vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine could work against the variants, we actually have data for Johnson & Johnson and Novavax, and, and that is very important. Um, it's one thing to work in a test tube. It's a completely different thing to work in populations where the variant viruses are circulating. All right. I want to shift the story back to Asia and look at the inoculation drive underway in this part of the world. Japan is going to start next week. Do you think uh, that they're working with the right timeline uh, uh, to be able to organize uh, the Olympics safely? The Olympics are going to be a special question because it's not only going to be vaccination of people who are Japanese, but vaccination of people who would be coming to see the Olympics, vaccination of the athletes. How are you going to keep the, are you going to require that the athletes uh, remain in quarantine for 14 days before they're allowed to participate in the games? Uh, would you have a situation like you did during the Australian Open? So there are still a lot of questions and countries have not fully addressed how to work together on this. And you know, international travel depends critically on two countries agreeing to a number of principles. And I'm not sure that we have that yet for COVID vaccines and vaccination certificates.